Hello. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hello, it's so nice to have you here today. This week, I finally got around to finishing up a project that I started last year. If you've been watching my videos for a while, or if you've looked around at some of my older videos, you might have come across my Buried Earth book project. Each month last year, I created a fabric page that was based on things that I was doing or thinking about at the time and buried them in the ground underneath my pear tree. Over the year, I explored many different textile techniques. I started out teaching myself to spin cotton, not very well because it's not very easy. And then I did a little bit of weaving using my hand spun yarn, wool for the weft and silk for the warp on a miniature Coast Salish loom, which is a lot easier to use in the full size version. The little one is a little bit fiddly. Of course I did some stitching here. I'm, I'm using silk thread to stitch a silk island onto a piece of cloth and I worked with some gold thread to sew on some rusty bottle caps in this piece. I invented a stitched language inspired by Emma Freeman, who was behind the whole Buried Earth book project. I also did some actual writing, which ended up getting stitched into a bit of a quilt fragment. I did some twining, it's a traditional technique used to make rope. I contemplated some pokey things like stinging nettles and safety pins. And I tried out some Sri Lankan textile techniques, some batik, some old Silanese embroidery. Why is it old Silanese embroidery? It says so in the book called Old Silanese Embroidery. And I challenged myself to learn how to do bobbin lace using only things that I had in my home. In each month, I added my page to a fabric bundle that was wrapped around an iron bar and buried under the pear tree in my garden. And if you're curious, I'll leave a link to a playlist with all of the videos in this project. And as the months went by, my bundle grew and grew and grew, and I anticipated that I would, at the end of the year, dig it all up, unfurl each of those pages, and spend some time lovingly repairing any damage that had been done. Well, things didn't quite go as planned. As I anticipated, the pages that had gone in late in the year when the ground was in its dorm and winter state were not very much changed other than some dirt. And as I unwrapped page by page, I was a bit disappointed because it didn't look like there would be much mending to do. And I thought, well, that's no fun. And even this page there, so we're three or four months in. And I was thinking, are all the pages going to look pretty much the same other than a bit of dirt? And then things started to change. The pages became more difficult to unfurl and they were definitely seem delicate. And you can see that sections of that page are missing there. And as I continue to work, it became harder and harder to dislodge the pa individual pages from the bundle and and in some cases there were whole sections off my page that was completely completely gone and it was almost like the cloth had turned to clay or something it was just really crumbly and stuck together and this didn't necessarily make me any happier. This piece here, that was the quilt fragment that had the little message inside and really off the whole page. That's about the only part that survived the little the little section where there was the, the message inside it. And you can see how deteriorated the, the cloth has become there. And this also was not what I was anticipating. I was thinking to myself, I have no idea how this is going to work. And it was cold out there unfurling that cold, wet paper. And I eventually decided that I was going to bring it all inside and sit comfortably in my warm house and continue to work with this. And this was a page that has the gold thread sewn on to it with the bottle caps. But yeah, it was cold out there. It was hard on my hands. My hands 
feel it really start to hurt when they get cold so it was better better to do this indoors but this is getting back into the the beginning part of the year and I had thought that at the beginning of the year things would the pages would be more more aged if you will but not to the extent that they were so I to be really delicate I felt like a bit like an archaeologist unearthing something that has been buried in the ground for thousands of years but you can definitely tell that cloth from natural fibers in my climate would not would not last very long if once it was buried in the earth so in some places it lasts really well and here I have to be so careful to un unpeel these layers here and the and the cloth is just shred shredding to bits but then then to my surprise the weaving that I'd done way back in February was essentially intact the protein fibers the wool weft and the silk warp were still intact and again just other than a bit of dirt and rust on the piece they looked like they look pretty much the same way that they looked when they went into the ground and even that leaf that I had paired there it's a leaf from a bow tree from Sri Lanka or a Bodhi tree but it looks pretty much the same as it did when it went in I guess maybe our local insects do not know what to do with a tropical plant like that I don't know and now we're down to the page that had been in the ground the longest the page that I put in the ground in January and this page there it was basically stuck to that iron bar it rusted right onto it and it was really difficult to pull it off but I persisted as much as I could easing it off ever so gently and carefully to see if I could get it to dislodge from the bar but in the end there was not much that I could that I could salvage but and I did as much as I could until I decided that there was just there was not no, no more was coming off and there's still bits stuck to the bar which I guess are going to be informing any future eco dye experiments that I do after that I set all of my pages aside between sheets of newspaper to dry out to see to see what I could salvage from from the remains and you can see these these are the pieces that are fairly intact that look pretty good but then there's this mess and I I can't even tell in some cases where where these bits belong which part they belong to and then again there's that woven piece with the leaf and there that's all I was able to salvage from that very first piece in January so I guess it wasn't the tropical leaf the cedar branches that I put in in January are pretty intact as well so what did I do after that well I did what any artist might do I stuck the whole pile in a corner of my studio where it sat for almost half a year now <laughs> anyway this week I here's what happened I decided there was no really no hope in trying to sew on this brittle crumbly cloth so I decided to preserve it forever so that it will remain forever unchanged and encase it in a layer of plastic aka clear acrylic medium and I so I painted a layer of this medium on each of the pages and the medium will preserve them forever in this state they won't change because it's an ar archival art material which means that it will stay like this forever and it's not what I initially intended but that's how it is and here are the before and after beauty shots January with my little bit of hand spun cotton topped with some cedar branches from my garden February the weaving with the Bodhi leaf that came back with me from Sri Lanka March was a silk island stitched with some silk thread and blanket stitch April was these rusty bottle caps and a little chip from a quantum computer sewn on with gold thread my invented stitched language written language my quilt fragment with the message sewn inside 
my hope for healing for our world, or perhaps a political message if you wish to see it that way. My twined rope with a souvenir salmonberry leaf that I rescued just before the city ripped it out of the ground. My safety pins with some desiccated, reconstituted nettle leaves. Some of my batik experiments with turmeric and tea from my house. My stitched caterpillar there using some old Solanese embroidery stitches. And lastly, my piece of bobbin lace. And that's it for now. I'm glad to have moved this project forward. I'm not sure if this is the end, but it's the end for now. And thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.